Nobody should be under any illusion. The situation is very serious. Expected to open down 300 points this morning, Robin. Otherwise, so that gives you an indication of how jittery the markets are. This is such a blow to investors. But it is a very serious situation, unprecedented in many ways. Stalled growth, high unemployment, a potential social unrest uh, as a result, and, uh, and financial markets in, in, in disarray. The current global economic crisis is the worst since the one of 1929 and it is still expanding. In this crisis, capitalism is revealing its complete senselessness. In the US and Spain, people have to live in tents because too many houses have been built. In Italy, the high rate of youth unemployment is being deplored, whilst the pension age is being raised. In Germany, labor productivity is rising, so more goods can be produced in less time. But still, people are working more and more overtime. In Greece, the situation is so devastating that relief supplies are being distributed because people don't have any money left for food. Party in June some 20 years ago I was born a rich man's son I had everything that money could buy But freedom The end of history is over. When Francis Fukuyama proclaimed this in 1992, he meant that liberal capitalism had become without alternative, in perpetuity. It didn't take too long until this narrative was challenged as bourgeois ideology. 1994, this was done by the Zapatistas in Chiapas. 1999, by the counter-globalization movement in Seattle, 2001 in Genoa. But at the same time, it couldn't be denied that Fukuyama's claim described a reality. Even our protests confirmed this. At no period in time would the slogan, another world is possible, have lured people into the streets. In other periods, people asked which other world would be the most desirable. Now they were asking themselves if there were any alternative to the status quo at all. Okay. 20th century capitalism is failing 21st century society. From the audience, could I please see a show of hands, those who agree with the resolution? Right, I'm going to say that's about 40 to 50 percent. With the outbreak of the crisis, even the fans of the system have realized that the existing world is unbearable. There is no more hope for a better future. It has been substituted by the fear of further deterioration. There is no longer a bourgeois promise of happiness. The promise for prosperity has been substituted by the hope of not being hit first. The promise of bourgeois democracy has been substituted by the factual constraints of competitiveness. Under the practical constraints of capitalism, superficial distinctions of party politics, from national chauvinistic, via conservative, liberal, green alternative, and social democratic to state socialist, become increasingly obsolete and irrelevant. Heute nun können Sie darauf vertrauen, dass ich alles daran setze, den Euro zu stärken. Gelingen aber wird das nur, wenn Europa Lehren aus Fehlern der Vergangenheit zieht. Eine davon ist, dass eine gemeinsame Währung erst dann wirklich erfolgreich sein kann, wenn wir mehr als bisher in Europa zusammenarbeiten. Europa wächst in der Krise zusammen. Monate danach 
Jetzt auf einmal wird in Europa Deutsch gesprochen. That is why Italy and Greece are now being governed by so-called technocrats and specialists. They can push through crisis policy measures, many of them demanded by Germany, without having to consider elections, detached from principles of legitimacy, even by bourgeois standards. The capitalist globalization of the past decades has intensified competition of corporations and nation-states alike. All leading industrial nations have thoroughly deregulated their markets and have imposed that model on others. They have cut benefits, privatized public goods, cut labor rights and increased social control, all in the interest of unimpeded capitalist growth. In Europe, supposedly on the sunny side of world capitalism, our lives are becoming ever more precarious and social divisions increase. This development puts a strain on everything. How we learn, how we work, how we treat each other. I don't know, this sounds a little sweet to me, sweet. populist obsession with alleged gambling games of banks and financial industries completely misses the actual problem. Because in capitalism, profiteering and crises are rooted in the general production of commodities, the day-to-day -day exploitation of the workforce. The motive of capitalist production is not to satisfy human needs, but to maximize profit. Your human needs only count as long as you're able to pay and useful goods only have a capitalist value if they can be sold for profit. Consequently, under capitalist competition, the production of goods is itself speculative. I don't know, this sounds a little sweet to me, sweet. That is why in the so-called real economy, it's always the same. First you have overproduction, then crisis, then bankruptcies and layoffs. And then everything starts all over again. So the banks didn't actually cause the crisis, but rather delayed it for years by means of their financial products. But neither mainstream trade unions and employers associations, nor mainstream politics are having any of this. And that's for a simple reason. It would reveal that capitalism is systematically undermining the foundations of society. Capital, being so productive, can't find enough profitable investment opportunities and therefore flees into the financial sector. Hedge funds and other so-called low-cost are therefore not the opposite of an allegedly good exploitation in the production, but rather its very symptom. In the long run, the systematic link between extraordinary crisis and ordinary wage labor leaves only two options open. Either we get rid of capitalism or our wages, ecological standards and social benefits will be cut drastically so that the exploitation of wage labor can again be profitable for some time. There can never be salvation in capitalism, only endlessly recurring crises. So why continue wasting our lives for this?
well, sweet to me, sweet. in many European cities are more than a sign of anti-capitalist solidarity. By now, they are already part of an Europe-wide discussion and network. We invite all emancipatory initiatives to join this process. We don't want to save capitalism, we want to overcome it. We oppose policies driven by national interest and nationalistic crisis ideology. Defending social standards is important, but we need to aim higher. We want to get rid of the fatal constraints of capitalism and its political institutions. Real democracy, as requested by many protest movements, that only works without capitalism, without states and without nationalism. <laughs> 